There we go. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter for this evening's session, Arlene Miller. She is one of the newest members of the FAPA Board of Directors, and we're looking forward to working with her over the next several years. So it is now my pleasure to introduce the Grammar Diva, Arlene Miller. Take it away. Thank you, Rob. You, I assume, are all here because you love grammar and think about it all the time like I do. Um, good. <laughs> um, I have a PowerPoint. Um, I don't generally like to use them online because I this isn't one of those sessions where I talk at you. I, um, you can unmute and because it's going to be interactive. So you can hide if you want, but um, you can unmute because I don't want silence when I ask a question. <laughs> um, am I going to be able to share my screen? Let me try. Um, it says I am disabled from sharing my screen. Do you have to make me a co-host or something? Oh, let's see. Yes. Okay. Now I've made you a co-host. Okay. And we got two more people coming on too. Pat, you see that? So are you able to share your screen now? There we go. There it is. Yes. And I can see a few of you. Let's see. I can move it over. Then I can't see my screen if I can see you people. Okay, anyhow, all right. Welcome, we are going to have fun with grammar and because I was a teacher, there will be, there is a, I teach it as a quiz. Who am I? Uh, I am originally from Boston. I spent 26 years in San North, uh, north of San Francisco, and I moved here about 20 miles south of Tampa in 2019. I have done all kinds of things with words. I was a technical writer, an editor, a freelance editor, a primo tap dancer, and for a while, an English teacher in my older career life, seventh grade English. I have... I was going to put a picture of my books up here, but I didn't. I have about 10 grammar books, a couple of novels, and a memoir. I have a romance novel that I have that I'm working on. I'm a member of FAPA, and also I'm still a member of BEPA, which is uh, the, your sister affiliate in San Francisco, and also Florida Writers, and IPPA. Okay. Who makes the grammar rules anyway? Well, there are two schools of thought in grammar, grammar being sentence structure, um, punctuation, word usage. There are prescriptivists and descriptivists. The prescriptivists are the grammar hawks who think there are rules and you must follow them. The descriptivists are the doves who think, well, if people use something then it becomes the, the law or the, the rule or the standard. Um, actually, most linguists are um, descriptivists. I was a prescriptivist, but I'm getting a little less, um, less strict about things. Who makes the rules? You might wonder, where'd they come from and who makes them? Um, because one person says one thing and you're, a writer says something, the editor says something else. Um, one style manual says one thing and another style manual says something else. There's gray areas. Uh, it's partly because nobody makes the rules. Uh, English is the only major language that does not have a ruling body. Um, I'll flip around with my notes here. Um, France has the French Academy Francaise to make the rules. Spanish has the Real Academia Española. Uh, Germany has one that I won't try to pronounce. And these organizations are responsible for controlling the evolution of language 
in terms of usage, vocabulary, and grammar. English does not have one. Okay, now we're going to have a quiz so you can shout out, unmute. These <laughs> are some common issues. Number one, I prefer less or fewer sprinkles on my ice cream. What is it? Just, just shout fewer. right fewer. 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 Good. What's, what's the rule? When I you forgot. can count it, when you can count it, it's uh, fewer. When you can't count it, it's less. Good. Yes. Things that are countable and usually plurals are fewer. Things you can't count, like um, spaghetti, frosting, frosting, salt, yeah, sand, less sand, less frosting. Yeah, you can't count them. You can count grains of sand, but you can't count sand. So it would be fewer grains, but less sand. Okay, good. Two, the it's issue. The first one. It's, first one. Good, okay. The first one is possessive. The second one is contraction. And the third one is possessive. I-T-S apostrophe is possessive. Nothing. No, it's nothing. It's incorrect. It's not a word. Right. It's redundant. And it's not really confusing if you think about it. The other um, possessive pronouns like yours and his and ours, none of them has an apostrophe. But all contractions have an apostrophe. So it's as with the apostrophe is a contraction. So it follows, it follows the rules. Number three, these bell bottoms are from the, which 60s or nine, which one is right? They might all be right. Two, two of them are right. Yeah? The first one and the fourth one. No, I don't think so. I'm sorry, no, a third one and the fourth Second, second third. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of them First. is one of them is correct. Second one. The last one. The fourth one. I haven't heard a right answer yet. Number two. No. Number <laughs> <laughs> <Three o 'clock. laughs> one. No. This is the prescriptivist, right? Talking, right? <laughs> okay, the first one is not correct because you don't need an apostrophe. in a plural, I guess it's a plural. Same with the 1960s, there would be no, uh, the last one, they would, they, you don't need an, uh, um, an apostrophe in a plural, unless it's so unclear, like a apostrophe S, if you don't put the apostrophe, if it's possessive, then it looks like the word as, but this is clear, so not that one. What are you leaving out of there? Something's left out, right? Yeah. One, nine. one nine. Okay, so where you leave something out, you put a what? Apostrophe. Yeah, so it's a third one. The third one to indicate that the 19 isn't there. Okay, and you don't need anything, you don't need the apostrophe um, S. All right. Four, direct your questions to Juan, Sarah, or I? Me. 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 Myself. Me. Me. My proposition use the accumulative tense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So everybody says um, I because they think it's always I, but it's not. Oops. Back we go. Uh, and if anybody, if people keep using myself incorrectly, I will scream. Um, I just wrote a blog post today about I've been listening to the TV news, mostly to the TV news and, and finding the goofs when people are talking. And I wrote a blog post listing about 15 of them. And many of them are the myself in the weirdest places. Okay, can anybody use myself in a sentence correctly? There is a place for it. As an intensifier? As it is, yeah. It's I either- myself know the answer or something? Yeah, yeah. It's either an intensifier like I myself know, or it's a 
reflexive that kind of bounces back like I did it myself. So if you're going to use myself, the subject of the sentence is probably going to be I. Okay. How about number five? Um, which one is it? First one. Yeah, number one. What's the rule? American goes inside the quotes. If you're from somewhere else, it goes outside the quotes. Very good. So we always put the period inside the quotes and British English puts it outside. And probably Australia, I don't really, in Canada, I don't know. Periods and commas, always, 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 always inside. <clears throat> commas, uh, not commas. Periods and commas, always inside the quotes. Semicolons and colons, although you don't see them that much with quotes, they always go outside the quotes. And number six is going to be a question mark. And where does that go? Between the T and the closed quote? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Inside. So you're putting it inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? What if the sentence said, "Did she ask? Are we there yet?" Then we go inside. Question mark inside the quotes. Well, that's that's interesting because both of those are questions. Right. What do you do when they're both questions? You would, um, oh. would you put it both? Keep it the same because, um, did she ask? No, you keep it the same. Are we there yet with a question mark between the yet and the quotation mark? Okay, I jumped ahead of myself too. Let me, let me go back a little bit. And what would you do if the sentence were, did she say, I hope we're there now? Oh, that's a that's a, so the whole thing is a question, but the quote is not. It would go outside of the quote. That would go outside. Yes. So if now back to where we were, if they're both questions, where does the question mark go? And there is just one question mark. So if they're both going to be questions, the whole thing and the quoted part, where does the where does the question mark go? Outside. It goes inside. That's the default place for it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. It goes inside if they're both, you know, it's probably easier just to rewrite the whole thing <laughs> and, <laughs> and wonder about it. That's always an easier thing. Your editor. Yeah. Number seven. Did you invite that girl? Who or whom? Who? 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 Mm. Who, because it's an object of met. Okay. Um, I heard, and it's getting closer to that date, I heard that by 2025, the distinction between who and whom would be gone. But mm. I don't know how that, I mean, it pretty much is now because people just don't know <laughs> how, to do, how to do it. Uh, but yes, it is whom because the object of met, even though it appears to start a, a clause, yeah. Number eight, okay. Jake along with his brothers is invited, are invited. Is, are. is, is. Jake is the subject are, in the singular. Are, are, are. How many think it's, um, shout, shout, I do. <laughs> I can't see all your hands. Oh. If you think it's is. I do. Yes. Yes. Um, how about if you think it's are? Are because of brothers. You know, that's an odd kind of thing. Because if it were Jake and his brothers, it's obviously are. But the, um, that kind of, what's it called? Non-essential that's put in between the commas doesn't count. It is is. Wow. Because, don't count because, that. because okay. Jake is the subject. If you die, if you diagram the right. sentence like we did right. in grade right. school, right. along with his brothers is right. isn't it material. So, so if you didn't have the comma, then it would be R because brothers is the closest noun to the verb. 
in the embedded clause, right? No, because you need the commas. You can't leave them out there, really. So it's it's is. Okay. If it were Jake and his brothers, that's a they're both the subjects. You wouldn't put a comma. Okay. And then it would be R. Okay. It, that's a weird kind of thing, but it's true. But you know, it sounds like Jake, along with his brothers, is the subject. No, Jake is. Um, yeah, you diagrammed this. What would you? What? Where would you diagram it? How would you diagram it? If I diagrammed this when I was in grade school, Jake, I'm Jake, sure. Jake is the subject. He is right. the guy. And right. if you, if you, along with his brothers, is a. It's a prepositional phrase. Jake is invited along with his brothers. Right. So, so it good. Yeah. If you flip it around, if you turn it around, along with his brothers is just a prepositional phrase. So it's, um, it's not. Okay. okay. Yeah. Number nine. Anything wrong with it? Yeah. There's no Oxford comma. <laughs> there is no Oxford comma. That's, um, that's optional. I like it. Some of you may not. You're not my friend if you don't like the Oxford comma. I love the Oxford comma. Uh, for eggs, you mean, right? Anything else wrong with it? Do we need a colon? Colon comes out. Colon, colon comes out. out. Yeah, the colon comes out because it's uh, it interrupts the flow of the sentence. It's just a sentence. The recipe includes flour, butter, eggs, and chocolate. If you had something like the recipe includes the following ingredients, then you'd have a colon. But this is just a sentence. So you, a lot of people put that colon in, but don't need it. It's wrong. I don't want to say it's wrong, but it is. Well, isn't a colon supposed to have a, a be a, for, for a really long list, not a short list like this? Well... I don't think it matters. If you had something that needed punctuation at the end, like the rest of plan includes the following, you'd have to put a colon because okay. it it needs punctuation or it's just a, a run on, it's a mess. Number 10, we met with Sarah, the coordinator, Jose, the intern and the assistant. How many people did we meet with? Two, three. Yeah, well, we'll it could be two or three. So we don't know. No. It could <laughs> be it could unknown. Be five, right? It could be yeah, five. It could be five, yeah. Or it could be three. So what do you do? Besides rewrite it, which is always an option. But yeah. what could you do? <laughs> what could you do to clear that up? You said it. You you verb. Semicolons. Okay, you put semicolons between the main ones. So if you put a semicolon after coordinator, for example, Sarah would be the coordinator. Sarah, the coordinator. Maybe she's a different person, in which case you put Sarah, semicolon, the coordinator, semicolon. I suppose if it really were five people, you could just use commas, but that would be confusing because you wouldn't be sure. So probably be best to put semicolons after each of them. Or you could move the um, coordinator in the intern before Sarah and Jose. We met with the coordinator, the intern, the assistant, Sarah. Yeah, Jose. You could, but that might be confusing with the... Could, the you, put, could you put the coordinator and the intern in parentheses? Mm. No. You could, no. you could, but you could. <laughs> you actually could, as long <laughs> as you put the commas in the right places with the parentheses. Yeah, you could. There's a worker. That's one workaround. <laughs> Number eleven. She likes pizza more than I, or more than me. I. I. Uh. Why is it I? Because the missing word would be do. Yeah, you have to put in the missing words in your head. She likes pizza more than she likes me. Well, maybe maybe that's true. In which case, it would be me. She likes pizza more than she likes me, or she likes pizza more than I do. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to put the words in, but you can tell which which word it's going to be. 
Okay, 12 is my very favorite. <laughs> What's wrong with that? It's easy to do those. It's really easy to make a mess like that. <laughs> it's just that the mother was in diapers. Yeah. It's a dangling modifier. It's not really misplaced because the word it's modifying isn't even in the sentence. So it's easy to fix. So what's the easy thing? You just said, my mother remarried while I was still in diapers. Yeah. While I was still in diapers, my mother remarried or the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to do those um, dangling things. Number 13. Is. Is. I grew up with R, but. It's, well, where'd you grow up? <laughs> Canada, Canada. Yes. This is one that's not really, nobody is going to notice if you do it wrong, because they're probably going to think you're, you're wrong if you do it right. It's family is a collective noun. You can, it depends the context of the sentence. This one is preferably actually R. Whoa. Because they are coming in from all over the country. So the family is being thought of as individual people. If you wow. said, my family oh. is coming from in from Illinois, they're all coming together. And that would be is. <laughs> Minor distinction, but there is sometimes, you know, like um, the band are tuning their instruments because they're all separate tuning their own instruments. But the band is playing tomorrow night. They're all, it's together. So that's, that's that one. Well, yeah. <laughs> 14, she plays the large drums. Ugh. I think I have an extra comma in there. I don't think that first comma should be there. Sorry. Uh, e G or I E the timpani in the orchestra. I E E. Second one I E. I would. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm it's a they're they're close, but one means what does E G mean? Uh, for example. For example. Yeah. And I E means it, it, asked. it asked. That is yeah. So it's the large drums equals the, the timpani. So it's large yeah. drums. That is, you know, explaining it. That is the timpani in the orchestra. Okay. Would it be clearer if you put the the timpani in the parentheses with the um, I E or E G? Oh yeah. And then you wouldn't have all these commas all over the place. Why or you, you just could say, just put the timpani in parentheses and leave out the IE altogether. You sure. You could say she plays the timpani in the orchestra because large. there are a lot of large drums that are not timpani. That's true, too. And I am a timpanist. <laughs> just an example. Are you? Yes, I am. I, um, I, played, I used to play the timpani when I attempted to play in the community band. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't pretty. I, I'd never <laughs> played with people, and I didn't know how to sit there and count out 180 beats that I did not play. <laughs> so I didn't know when to come in. I don't know what timpani meant, so now I know what it means. But. They're the big. Actually, timpani is plural. You can actually a tune. A singular is called a, a, timpa, a timpano. So timpani is of the plural. Right, form. right. Is it timpano? It's not timpanum? No, timpano. It's Italian. Timpano, OK. Nice to know. Some people say timpano, but who cares? Oh, I, okay. Now we're here. Okay. All right. I just finished reading, and that is a book title there in italics. Which words will be capitalized? Uh, this this your is handsome and shine. Um, uh, this your chance and shine. All right. four of them. Yep. Everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every anyone disagree? Uh, I'm sorry, I was distracted. What is the question? The question is, 
um, This Is Your Chance to Shine <clears throat> is a book title. Which words would you initial cap? Your publisher has a choice whether they want to initialize, capitalize the is. But the two should definitely be low. Who is, who, is. Is giving, who is saying that is? Who? What about is? The publisher. What it's publisher? A publisher could could choose to say is is a important word in the title. Right. Um, it's, it's not necessarily correct, but sometimes you'll see that. Some if I if I see is not capitalized in a title, I go insane because <laughs> it's a what? A verb. It's a verb. You. It's important. It's little, but it's important, and it needs to be capitalized in a title. Hmm. or heading unless you unless you're using um <laughs> sentence capitalization like some newspapers where the headline there's just the first word is capitalized in that case but if you're doing kind of standard um capitalization is is a verb and it must be capitalized yeah. And since all the other words are capitalized, except for two, you could actually, if there's one word that's not capitalized, you could capitalize that one too. You I could. probably wouldn't, but you could. Yeah. yeah. 16, I left my coat on the bus, but now it's gone. I don't see anything wrong with it. What's gone, the bus or the coat? Right. <laughs> so, oh, my. Both. Unclear oh. antecedent. Now, and. You don't know if the bus is gone, the coat's gone, they're both gone. How can you rewrite it? I left my coat on the bus and now it's gone. Boom. It's still confusing. Oh. Yeah. Not I, I haven't thought of the way to, I mean, without repeating oneself. <laughs> on the bus, I left my coat, but now it's gone, which is very un. You know. <laughs> It's not very good. Still, it's not very good, but it's grammatical. Still, it'll work. It's yeah, you might confusing. Might as well say I left my coat on the bus, but now my coat is gone. I mean that. that my uh, my coat is gone. I left it on the bus. Yeah. And now the bus has left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I left my coat on the bus, but. Somebody ripped it off. <laughs> okay. Well, they, couldn't yeah. rip the bus. they ripped the bus off. That'd be kind of hard to do. Oh, the bus is gone, and I may have left my coat on it. Yeah. Oh, however. Requires a rewrite. It does require a rewrite. 17, each student must have his or her, his with her in parentheses, um, and then there was the his, her slash, and there was the alternating his with her or their permission. His or her. His or her. His or her. her. I fought this one a long time. I fought against the singular there. <laughs> um, pretty much these days, you must use there. What? It's, a, did... it's a gender issue. Um, they have not thought of a word yet for the singular third person, except it. They have not thought of a, a, a non-gender specific human pronoun. So um, now there is, excuse me? I said, perhaps we should be thankful. There's no non-gender pronoun. Well, or we could just leave out all of that and say right. each must have a permission. Right. The best thing to do is just to rewrite it so you avoid it. And it's always easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. I fought it for a long time, but now I will use the singular there if I have to. Hmm. I don't know why they can't figure out a word to be a, you know, non-gender specific. It's because so many people are in the mix it's it's easy i've seen ze maybe Ooh. oh yeah um this is uh james's book <laughs> first one one s the second one and that's just recently changed 
Was it just recently changed? Just recently, they have decided that we should always use the comma. I mean, the the Apo second one, the apostrophe S, because it helps it not be confusing either way of whoever's reading it. So they've the rules now have changed to be just the second one. Hmm. Isn't it? Just yeah, Chicago India Manual. I can I can look up the rule, but it's Chicago Manual has now changed that. Hmm. Okay, because I have always done it that way. Um, I know that in elementary school I learned it the first way. I think. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, the rule has changed to make it easier, so there's no confusion anymore. Okay. It just always use as a yes. Okay. Um, hmm. I go by the pronunciation. I mean, you you say James's. So yes. James it used to be the way it was done. There are some work, some I can forget one now, but there are names that you don't pronounce with the, you know, the second S. Right. Well, that used to be the rule, but it is no longer. Good. Even if it's SS, like Frederick Douglass, it's right. still SS apostrophe S. Yes. Or Princess, it's still SS apostrophe S. Yes. Except if it's Socrates or Xerxes. The ones that um, have the long e s uh, parent or, or Jesus, those are not apostrophe s. Hmm. Mm. Wait, wait. Okay. Nineteen. Reading a book by the window. The cat sat in my lap. The cat is reading a win a book. <laughs> Another one of those misplaced modifiers. Yeah. Um, I'm reading a book by the window. The cat sat in my lap. As I was reading a book by the window, the cat said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has anything changed in grammar? Not a whole lot, you know, since um, Shakespeare. I mean, the <laughs> language has changed, but not really the sentence structure too much. But you can do things now that you couldn't do before. You can split an infinitive to boldly go where no man has gone. You can now put that adverb in between there and nobody will nobody will care hmm. you can start a sentence with a conjunction not all the time but if it makes sense and it's not real formal writing you can start with so or and or but once in a while if it's actually kind of connecting something you can but if you start with a but don't put a comma after it no don't do that <laughs> no don't do that you can end a sentence with a preposition, except where are you at? You can't do that because you don't need the at at all. But um, you can say, who did you give the, whom did you give the book to? You don't have to say to whom did you give the book. It's not a big deal if you end with a preposition. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can use the singular they. And... You can use never... dashes instead of quotes in dialogue. Does anyone do that? Yeah. Do. How do you, how yeah. do you use the singular they? Yeah. Yeah. How do you use the singular they? Oh, that was from the, instead singular. of the his or her. Oh, oh, yeah. You can use it with a singular, um, like everyone should bring their own lunch everyone is actually singular but you use the plural they to refer it's to like it. a gender thing it's a gender issue no i think in england and canada i know uh, they was so i grew up with everyone they are uh, well most people have always used the singular they but it was considered wrong because everyone it sounds plural but it's not it's singular right. and his or her is just kind of clunky so people use they anyway and they are singularly, but now it's okay to do it because yeah. of the gender issue. So yeah. you can say they is? Not that way though. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point though. Um, you're stuck there. You have to use he or she yeah. or it, right? Yeah, or a name, use a name. <laughs> Let's use a name. Yeah, because you can't say they is. Hmm. You can uh, 
use it to refer back to a singular. Like everyone or someone or the, the student can, the student, the student can look up their grade. It sounds bad in that case. It sounds better with, it's more normal when you start with something like an everyone or someone. But it's wherever you would use his or her, you can now use they or their. Okay. That's okay. Dashes instead of quotes. You know, I had never read a book like that. And a few years ago, they said, oh, so and so writes with dashes instead of quotation marks. And I thought, ooh. <laughs> that sounds, that's terrible. And I just read The Lincoln Highway. Has anyone read The Lincoln Highway? Okay, they, um, it's a very good book, sort of, thick. Uh, and they use um, dashes. I'm not even sure if they were M dashes or N dashes. Probably M dashes. Instead of quotes, they even sometimes had the tag, like that he said, right, right in the line. And I really uh, didn't think I would like it and I didn't know the book was written that way. And I, it didn't bother me at all. I actually thought it looked a lot cleaner than using quotes. I liked it. And a friend of mine who knows nothing about publishing or writing, I was also reading the book and I said, what do you think about the dashes instead of the quotation marks? And she said, oh, I never noticed that. So it's, um, yeah, it's, What's the difference, um, the M dash and the dash at the end of a word, somebody interrupts in dialogue? That's an M dash. Would you use an M dash there or just a regular dash with a space between the last letter and the dash? You would use an, the long dash, an M dash. And as far as the space around it, people seem to vary on that one. I always learned there was no space. Okay. I'm, I, I'm only speaking with dialogue. Does the UK use something different than the American quotes? I'm sorry? I no, don't I'm know. Oh, do you know? I don't know. I, I've seen that done like in French books and Italian, they'll use that dash rather than quotes and they'll indent the dialogue. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about somebody's cut off. They're speaking and suddenly someone else enters and you have a dash there or three right, dots. For, for interruption. Yeah, yeah. I'm that not talking be, about the, the other one. There. Right. That would, it's at the end of the sentence. That would be a long dash, an M dash. And I don't space around it. You're not supposed to. Yeah. I, as far as, yeah. Some people now say they space around it, but I, I don't. Yeah. The N dash, the short dash is just used for number ranges, like in an index, and the minus sign. And then the hyphen is the tiny one. And um, you still shouldn't overuse exclamation points as I did in all of these, because I like them. Okay. I have some trivia. I have some language trivia, if I can find it. Okay, we did that. Okay, Jeffrey Chaucer was the first person to choose to write in English, but of course Shakespeare, the most famous. Uh, you probably know Shakespeare coined a lot of idioms. I used to teach these to my seventh graders and they never heard of most of them. And they just could not, some couldn't figure them out. Like it's Greek to me, all Shakespeare stuff, vanished into thin air, green eyed jealousy, in a pickle, slept not a wink, have seen better days, the long and short of it, foul play in one fell swoop without rhyme or reason, dead as a doornail, eyesore, laughing stock, all come from Shakespeare. He either made them up or was the first person to use them in a play. There was one um, my, my students just couldn't figure out, salad days. You heard of salad days? Those were the salad days. They just figured, oh, those are the days when we ate lettuce. They just really could not figure that one out. There's the good old days when we were green. <laughs> green meaning young and innocent. It's salty, doesn't it? Salad, salty, it's, you know, the, the root sal, salt, like salty days. That's Is it? Not what know. it comes from. I'm not I sure. don't know. I just, just thought of that now, Lawrence. I don't know. 
the salty days. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the salty life. Were the salad days necessarily salty? I, my salad days weren't. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were sugar either. <laughs> Shakespeare had one of the largest vocabularies of any English writer at 30,000 words. Um, estimates of an educated person's vocabulary today is half that, 15,000 words. So. When I taught, I used to teach um, Greek and Latin roots. And my favorite was when I taught phobia, meaning fear, because if you look up the phobia list online, there's thousands of phobias. Um, I don't know how real some of them are, but they're very funny. And they're listed alphabetically, not because not what the fear is. So you can't really look up what, what is the fear of, but these are some good ones. And I know the first one is real and it's hard to pronounce. Iraqi butyrophobia. That is the one, Ara Iraqi beauty tyrophobia, A-R-A-C-H-I-B-U-T-Y-R-O phobias. That's the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. So it's a real one. Is that one, is that one? <laughs> That's there's, there's some really weird. Um, uh, bathophobia is not fear of uh, the bath. It's actually the fear of depth which I guess could be related to bath. <laughs> Chorophobia from choreography is fear of dancing. <laughs> Geniophobia, that's G-E-N-I-O, phobia is fear of chins. <laughs> oh, <everyone has> that <laughs> one. <laughs> one chins? Chins, yeah. There's some weird ones. Levophobia is fear of things to the left side of the body. <laughs> Omphalophobia is the fear of belly buttons. Uh, scriptophobia, which you may have, is the fear of writing in public. <laughs> and uh, let's see, well, I'll save that little trivia for last. There's um, three words in English that end in G-R-Y. What might they be? There used to be two and now there's three ending in G-R-Y. Hungry. Hungry. Hungry? Angry. angry angry and the new one <laughs> angry hangry that's what? the uh being angry because you're hungry it's angry. A, it's a real <laughs> word it's i think it's in the dictionary i think it's real now hangry it's one of those new words huh. um and i looked this up on amazon today and i know this is actually true and i knew somebody that knew of this book there's a book called gadsby not the great Gatsby, but Gadsby, G-A-D-S-B-Y. Anyone heard of it? It's written by Ernest Vincent Wright, I think in 1939. It has over 50,000 words in it, which is about 250 pages. And none of the words in the entire book contains the letter E. Oh, I've heard hmm. of that. Yeah. And I looked at the um, look inside the book on Amazon today and true enough. And the words are not um, like apostrophes put in instead of E's or anything. They're actual words and it actually makes sense. And there actually are no E's. It does get in the way of the grammar a little bit because uh, he can't use doesn't. So he has to say, you know, don't, it don't, so but it, it's real. Yeah. It might be interesting to read. And my last bit of trivia is this phobia. Hippo monstroses quipidalia phobia, 27 letters. Hippo monstroses quipidalia phobia. What might that be? Fear of monsters and hippos and the, I don't, the <laughs> I don't know why it's called hippo monstroses. I think it's also sometimes called sesquipeliophobia. They leave off the hippo monstrosis, means the same thing. It's ironic. It's the fear of what? 
Irony, humiliation. Long words. It's the fear of long words. Long words. Fear of long words. Hippomonstrosis phobia. 27 minutes long. It is a fear of long words. It is. <laughs> it really is. Uh, I can take questions now, or I can uh, give you some of these um, things that I have heard on the news that I wrote my blog post about that are, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to make a mistake when you speak because you can't go back and edit it and re change the, you know, the order of the words around. Um, maybe the people, if they were writing, would not have made these same mistakes. But here are some things that I have heard on the news. Non-people of color. Now, you know what they mean, but it, they said non-people of color. The images speak for itself. <laughs> In order for myself, and they went on to this sentence, uh, there was a, um, a memo, an email that said news release, and release was spelled R-E-A-L-I-S-E. <laughs> His whereabouts are unknown. Should it be is unknown? His whereabouts is unknown or are unknown? That's a, that's a great, great area. Hmm. Whereabouts seems like it would be Singular. Singular. Yeah. I follow the money where they take me. <laughs> mm. Direct any questions to Bob, Scott, or I, of course. I heard two people do this. The ship represented power and then it sunk. Isn't it sank? Well, it has sunk, but isn't it sank? Sink, sank, sunk. Sink, sank, sunk. Yeah. 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 I heard that twice. Oh, this is good. Myself and the guest are side by side in the video. Oh. Hmm. It was a moment where, it was a moment when they said where. Oh, somebody pointing to herself in a photo said, there's myself. That's <laughs> 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 just weird. Okay. There's myself. Oh. Please email myself or some of the other people. Everyone does this, like I said, and it really should be as, as I said, because it's got a subject and a verb after it. But anyway. um, somebody, oh, it was somebody in uh, publishing who said this. They ended the sentence with where you want your books at. <laughs> I heard this last weekend at the conference. <laughs> I also heard one of those people say especially instead of especially. Um, there's a sign outside my neighborhood, drive like your kids live here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> this is my favorite. This is an advertisement for um, a jewelry store. And when I heard it, I mean, I know that it came out this way just because she was talking, but it's pretty weird. My mother handed down her diamond necklace to me, who wasn't with us anymore. Who wasn't what? Who wasn't with us anymore. My mother handed down her diamond necklace to me, who wasn't with us anymore. <laughs> I think she meant her mother wasn't with us anymore, but it sounded really strange. <laughs> All right, um, how do I get rid of my screen? now how do i stop sharing stop, it? Sharing. stop sharing there should be a button you have to hover over down at the bottom the top i can't oh there the share screen oh now i'm just all messed up here i got too many screens i don't have how do the i get host my zoom stop screen the back how do i get my zoom screen back oh <laughs> i have you still on the side and then I have, I don't know. The host should be able to take it back. Yes. I'm not sure. I mean, I could take privileges away. That might work. Yeah. No, no. Go up to the top of the Oh, wait. Screen. I see a red dot. OK. <laughs> there it went. OK. And now I have you people, but you're. 
we still have your screen. I do. I don't have my screen, and I don't have you either. I just have Rob and me. <laughs> Where did you go? Now I have that screen. Don't want that screen. You still see my screen, huh? Yes. I, I don't yeah. have it. I closed it. That's weird. Now, let, let me take your privileges away. Maybe that'll help. Um... But I'm still seeing your screen up there. Mm -hmm. If if you go up to the top of the screen where you see the screen sharing, the host can click on that and stop the screen sharing. Yep. It says my screen says, "Oh, stop share." There you there go. You there, go. You there, you <laughs> there you go. There you all are. Now I see you all. Huh. Hey, uh, Arlene, what's happened to the past participle? I have heard, I would have gave, I could have knew, I oh. have went. I, I have I'm went, gonna... I have went. I can't, I, my best friend says that and I finally just said, you know, it's not, I have went. And she said, I don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I have ate, I have swam, I have drove. I yeah. don't know. I, it's time to, time to start unfriending people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's even educated people do that. They just don't, they don't get those irregular verbs. I don't know. Yeah, I have eight. It's, yeah, I don't know what happened to it. I still use them, right? You know. Then I hear less people all the time. Yeah, <laughs> even, even on, um, you know, on their news all the time. But you know, less is just taking over more and more because it's easier to, to have one thing than to have two things. That's what happens yeah. with grammars everywhere now. And it's easier to say. Yeah, less people, it, less. Yeah, and it sounds um, less educated. <laughs> Fewer sounds, you know, elite. <laughs> it sounds elite. And then I hear between you and I all the time. Always. Always, I knew an English teacher who said that. I worked with an English teacher who said that. Yeah, yeah. Sort of between you and me. There's no excuse for that. <laughs> but then that's your this you're a prescriptivist, right? You're... I am a prescriptivist light. By nature, right? It sounds like. Yeah, yeah. But I'm getting a little looser, a little more casual. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Any questions? Comments? Wasn't that fun? Yeah, enjoyed it very much, Arlene. Thank you. That stuff, yeah. Thank you. Terrific class. Great. I, Thank you. I learned something tonight. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, I was speak. I was. There were um, four authors talking at an indie bookstore in California when I was there. I was the last one to speak, and they were all, you know, talking about their fiction books and. I think when they introduced me, people in the audience noticeably rolled their eyes. And then they were laughing. So it was good. <laughs> that, you know, you have to you have to make grammar interesting because otherwise. So somebody called you up on the phone and you, what do you say? Uh, is Arlene this is there? she. This is <laughs> she. And you know, most people do. I don't know why they do, but people who would never speak correctly do say that for some reason. They say this is she instead of this is her. A lot of people do. Although when they knock on the door, they don't say it's I. Yeah. Yeah. I just say you got me. <laughs> Correct. Talk to me. In the flesh. <laughs> well, it's good to see so many people here for, for this. Fun. <laughs> Because nobody lost, never you. wants me to speak at a conference because nobody, they figure nobody will go, I guess. <laughs> I've spoken in, in a few of them, but um, yeah, usually it's like, no, I just don't fit in anywhere. So, oh, well. I think it's very important. I'm glad you do, and so do I. <laughs> Workshops would be okay, I think. Yeah, I've done a whole bunch of stuff, but generally I, I did a couple of um, 
I probably did a writing conference in California and maybe a, the BAPA one too. But certainly IBPA doesn't want anything to do with grammar. Is it BAPA or BAPA? I belong to both. BAPA is it Bay pronounced area. Or, uh, is it pronounced FAPA or FAPA? I pronounce it FAPA, but I guess since there's only one P, it could be FAPA. It is FAPA. It's, it's FAPA. an acronym. You follow FAPA. different rules, I think, yeah, of an acronym. It's FAPA. FAPA sounds funny. Yeah. Some people call it BAPA is B-A-I-P-A, -A, Bay Area Independent Publishing Association. And some people call it BAPA. I don't know. They, they, they pronounce it wrong. BAPA. Maybe they call it BAPA. <laughs> But I don't think we've ever had this discussion about BAPA before. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, well, I always just assumed it was FAPA. Yep. And BAPA. BAPA has, um, some of you might find it interesting to go to a BAPA meeting. Um, they have member meetings every month that last over three hours. Oh. And they are really wonderful meetings. I, you know, they they started going on Zoom, and now when I moved away, they started. That was before the pandemic, right before the pandemic, and they started letting me come in on like computers, so they would sit a laptop somewhere, and I could just kind of see people walk by. But now it's on Zoom, and and they haven't met in person again yet. Um, and even when they do, there'll be a Zoom option, partly because the president lives in Oregon now, and people live all over the place, but. Their meetings are um, on Saturdays once a month, and they're three hours. The first hour is Q and A, and there's all kinds of people there that know all kinds of things. And the second hour, everybody gets about twenty seconds to introduce themselves and say what they're doing. And the third hour is um, a speaker, Ooh. and they have fifteen like fifteen minute breaks in between the um, three hours, and they have breakout sessions. And they're really good meetings. So I have stayed with BAPA and joined BAPA. So if anybody's ever interested, they're interesting meetings. They have good speakers like, um, I don't know, Brian Judd, Penny Sensiveri. Um, they do a lot of um, deep dives into Amazon. Mm -hmm. Can never dive deep enough into Amazon. <laughs> I've been working on my Amazon all week after that conference. I spruced up my ad because they were doing nothing. And then I attempted to add a plus content that I learned about from the um, conference. I'm working on it. Well, I see it's just about uh, eight o'clock. Uh, thanks to everyone for uh, attending our uh, meeting today. Thank you so much for Arle Ar to Arlene for giving a terrific class. And uh, with that, I'll say good night to everyone. See you uh, next week. I hope to see you at the conference. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.